What is up, most distinguished patrons of this channel? No, I'm not on a holiday beach vacation, and I don't think I'd want to because it's over 100 degrees outside. It's hotter than hell. So anyways, we're going to look at two failures and a probable fix on a job that I was involved in pretty recently. So let's get into it. So I was tasked with making a tool, and all I was really told was the tool would pound these staples into the ground. And I called it a staple. It's really two pieces of sharpened rebar welded to a strap. But what these do is they hold down some sort of a mesh on the sandy beach in order for people in wheelchairs to be able to scoot down to the beach, I guess. That is at least what I was told. And I'm like, okay, well, that's got to be pretty easy, you know, pounding a rebar stake into sand. And the parks department gave me some metal to work with, which was basically a metal tube and some sheet metal. I'm like, okay, not a big deal. I'll TIG weld it up because it happened to be there on the bench right by my TIG welder. And I thought, okay, everything's done. No problem. Easy job, right? So this is what I came up with. This is what I welded up with the materials that were provided to me. It's basically three pieces into a C-shape with end caps. It's open on the bottom. The main material is 3.2 millimeter eighth inch steel and the tube is also 3.2 millimeter eighth inch wall tube. And I welded a cap on the top and figured, okay, this would work pretty good. And it would definitely be trying to drive those stakes in by hand. I could see where that would hurt your hands after a while. I guess they had like 300 of them to do or something. So I made this, it was like, cool, job's done, everything's good. And then about two days later, it came back in literal pieces. I'm talking like nothing bigger than maybe two by two inches. And the pipe itself was bent clean over. And at that point, I'm like, what are you guys doing with this? And they're like, oh, well, we're pounding the stakes in the ground and it broke. You know, you need to make it stronger. And well, I thought to myself for a minute, something doesn't make sense here, but sure, whatever, I'll make it stronger. So then I ended up making a second one, very similar to this, just beefed up in every respect, and here it is. So the keen observers among you would notice this appears to be broken, and you're absolutely right. So I ended up making a second one, which this is the second one. I didn't take pictures during the construction, but I made it with a solid steel shaft there, and everything was made out of quarter-inch thick steel, TIG welded together, and the guy brought this back like the very next day after I made it, and it was just in pieces, as you can see. And not only is it broke there, but the side was broke off of it. And I'm like, okay, what are you guys doing with this that you can break this? Because under any kind of normal circumstance, you would never be able to break this. And the guy says to me, he says, oh, we're using it in a jackhammer. And I kind of looked at him. I said, what do you mean a jackhammer? And he says, yeah, we got a gasoline-powered jackhammer. And at that point, he like cuts me off before I even could say anything. He says, oh, I think you just need to make it out of box tube, it's same thickness, and then it won't break. And I look at him, and I'm like, no, I don't think that's the issue. The issue is you're using a jackhammer to pound stakes into sand. And I looked at him and again, and I said, how hard is the sand? And he goes, oh, well, the sand's only like the top two, three inches. After that, it's rock. And I'm like, oh, well, this explains everything. So then I went out, looked at this jackhammer in his truck, and no joke, it was a gasoline-powered jackhammer. I didn't even know that existed, but that's what he had, and that's what he was going to use. And at this point, I realized what I'm in for. So I decided to go a little bit overboard, kind of really for comedy reasons, because I thought, well, maybe I can make something that they can't break. And this is what I came up with. To start things off, I found a piece of angle iron that was three quarters inch thick. And I started with that and a piece of one inch thick bar stock that I found laying around. Now, I did this partially because it was scrap laying around and I didn't see the necessity in ordering all new steel to make something that they're probably still going to break anyways. So using scrap worked out to my benefit in that respect. So I ended up doing a full penetration weld 
on that one inch bar stock to the three quarter inch angle iron. So it's 100% weld, stick welded all the way throughout to the surface. So it essentially made a U channel that's fully welded. Then I took a piece of what I believe was an inch and three quarter inch solid steel bar stock and I ground it down to basically a needle point, butted it up with a slight gap to that C channel I made, and then I TIG welded it all the way out. And as you can see here, all of that is going to end up being weld. And one of the things I learned by them breaking those other ones is that quarter inch thick steel is fine. And well, when you don't fully weld something, what ends up happening is that shaft was basically rattling and vibrating off of it and it pounded it enough to where the welds broke. By grinding a point on a solid steel shaft like this and fully welding it, the inner part of that can't flex or move against the base material of that C channel. Therefore, it's more or less one homogeneous piece of steel, far less likely to break or fail. Now, this tool is going to be excessively heavy, excessively big, and let's face it, they don't make welded tools for jackhammers generally. They're one-piece forgings, and that's for a good reason, because it's lighter and stronger. And I don't know that they make a tool as a one-piece forging for a jackhammer for what these guys are doing, so this is the best I could do. Here's the first pass on it basically TIG welded it all the way around it and then let it cool. I did a pass about every, I don't know, 15-20 minutes in between other jobs I was working on at the time. I didn't let it get too heat soaked because that would be bad. Now I didn't use tool steel for this for a couple reasons. One, because I didn't have any laying around and two, honestly, I don't know that it would have been stronger Using a jackhammer on tool steel, you can wind up with shards of material getting blasted off of it and people getting injured. I almost rather have mild steel to where if it fails, they need to come up with a different plan rather than risking it. I mean, basically all of this stuff will deform over time rather than shattering or breaking. Another pass done. It goes by pretty quick when you just use this as fill-in work between jobs. Sitting there doing it non-stop would have been quite interesting because a piece, even though it's really thick, would have got super hot and it would have welded poorly. You can see here it's maintaining square, which is really good, and that's because I'm fully welding it all the way around. If I only welded one side only all the way out, it would be almost impossible to keep it square. In this picture, I put some stabilizing legs just to help keep that shaft straight and not break off to the side. Again, those are fully welded all the way out from a needle point more or less, so full penetration welds. And this is a great example of a time that minimal penetration or simply a standard fillet weld isn't gonna cut it, it will break. And yet more passes on this. It's still maybe two passes away from being filled up on the main shaft, but the outer supports are pretty much right there, right where they need to be. Now, I'm not a huge fan of doing wide weaves. With TIG, you can get away with it to a certain extent and not lose strength. But honestly, for something like this, I probably should have done stringers. But where I was at is I didn't care anymore because this thing, I've already wasted hours and hours. And I still had a feeling that they were going to end up breaking this again. Because again, you know, one piece forging is what you should be using in a jackhammer. So here it is pretty much at completion. The main shaft is done. I believe I put another pass on the upright supports where they meet the shaft just to add a little bit more. Not that it would have mattered, but this thing is pretty damn beefy. I'm not joking. It probably weighed like about 20, 21 pounds. It was almost like too heavy to hold with one hand. Very cumbersome, but hey, when you break everything else and I'm down to doing something like this to try and make an unbreakable tool, well, this is what you wind up with. Here is the completed tool. I ended up wrapping and then fully welding those rings around it and that was so it fits in a jackhammer barrel properly and doesn't rattle around. Total height was probably 16, maybe 18 inches, somewhere in the ballpark of that. Again, overly heavy and overly built for what it is and at this point I'm still not even certain that they're not going to break it. And here it is with a fresh 
neon red paint job. I tend to paint tools like this bright red, that way people don't lose them or they don't get mistaken for somebody else's tool. just works out better that way. Let's take a look at the inside of the C-channel. And here you can see that one inch piece of stock on the top and then the three quarter on the bottom. The sides were around one inch. Everything fully welded. I even welded hard face passes on the inner part that hits the top of that staple. Again, kind of pointless, but I thought, well, maybe it'll help from getting that pounded in. Because again, uh, these guys are apparently pounding them into rocks and stuff. And I had to do whatever I thought was necessary because I didn't want to make a fourth one. And I even told them, I said, well, if you break this one, you're not going to get another one because the boss isn't going to let me build another one for, the, for you to break. And he kind of had a look on his face like, oh, really? And I handed it to him and he picked it up and it almost hit the ground. I think he thought it was going to be really light. It's been a few months since I made the tool and it hasn't come back broken. So that means one of two things. One, I made it strong enough to where they couldn't break it. Or two, they just picked it up, set it in a corner, and that's where it sits collecting dust. My guess is it's probably two since the guy didn't seem too happy with how heavy it was. But hey, when you break two of them and I've already wasted quite a bit of time making those, the third one, there won't be a fourth, you know what I'm saying? So there you have it, two failures and maybe I won on the third one and sometimes that's how jobs go. You can only make something so strong before it just becomes almost useless and I guess I had the last laugh on this making this beast of a tool. So with that said, if you guys got any stories about some excessively ridiculous tools that you've made, feel free to share them in the comments section. Otherwise, until next time.